What's up peeps? So it is Jacob here and now so I get on quite a semi-regular basis a lot of questions about portfolios. So I have decided to make the complete guide to create the best most awesome portfolio that will get you into design school. Hopefully. So your first step to create the best portfolio ever is actually not to create the portfolio. Your first step is do your research on the university that you want to get into. What you want to find out is what are the requirements that they want to see in your portfolio and what are the actual base requirements for the layout of your portfolio. And the best way to do this is to actually go in and talk to them. So a lot of these universities will have open days where you can go in and see the facilities and talk to lecturers. Go in there with a set of questions to ask about your portfolio. Then, and only then, it's time to create this sucker. Mm -hmm. Which brings me to step number two, gathering your content. So hopefully at this stage you already have a few projects to draw from that you've made at school or just from the odd hobby. If you don't have this, you have a lot of work ahead of you. Mm -hmm. So what is good content for your portfolio? Number one, artwork is great. Homemade projects are also good. School projects are great. And of course, 3D modeling. Basically what they're wanting to see here is that you can create and you are creative. Number three is layout. But before I get into layout, I just want to surmise what we know and what is going to be expected. Drawing from my own experience, talking to other fellow classmates and lecturers, I have a pretty good idea of what the design school wants to see in your portfolio. Number one, they want to see that you are creative. Any design field is a very, very creative career choice. And if you're not creative, you're going to struggle. So show that you're creative. Number two, they want to see that you can work really, really hard. Any design field, especially industrial design and architecture, you'll be working your butt off. Say goodbye to anything while you're at university. You'll be in the studio most days. Number three, they want to know that you can make things. So they want to see that you have a rough idea of how to do it. I mean, it doesn't have to be perfect. They're not looking for highly skilled work. They just want to know that you can make things. Some people can't. Number four, they want to get to know who you are. What drives you? What are you passionate about? And things like that. And number five, they also want to see that you have direction. They want to know why. You've got to tell them the why. Why do you want to study industrial design? Why does that wake you up every morning and get excited about it? So, to answer all of those questions in your portfolio, this is how we do it. Here we go. Your portfolio should have two parts. The body and the cover letter, cover essay, or whatever you want to call it. Let's talk about the body first. So in the body, you are wanting to include probably three or four different projects. Don't include all of them don't include your crappy project. Include your best and not too many, but the idea is you want to go in depth with each one. For example, if you want to get into, say, fashion design, you definitely want to include some of the fashion you've designed. Maybe like a dress that you've worked on or something like that. If you want to get into product design, show a product that you've designed. I mean, <laughs> it's not tricky to understand. They want to see your thought process that goes into making that product. So don't just show the finished render with a description of what it does. Show the steps that you went through to make this product. When it comes down to it, what they want to see is your thinking. How you solve problems. And that's sort of a shame. When I was submitting my portfolio a couple years ago, one critique that um, the guy said that it needed was 3D work. At the time, I had never used any CAD software before. So I taught myself SketchUp one week before I had to submit and made a cool 3D project. So teaching yourself CAD is not difficult and it is something you can do in a very short period of time. I've got a video on how to learn Fusion 360 in 20 hours. So don't fret if you don't know CAD, you can learn CAD. Right, now that you've got a rough idea of how to progress through your body, the next thing up is the cover letter. Mm-hmm. So with the cover letter, the three things that you want to get across in this is number one, who you are, how that university can help you, and what is your direction? What is your goals? What are your visions? So in my cover letter, I start off with a story basically telling my life story about how I discovered product design and how I knew that I wanted to pursue it. You can read my cover letter in the link below in the description and hopefully get some ideas. The second part is I briefly talked about how I thought AUT, my university, could help me achieve the goals that I want to achieve. And then finally, I talked about my vision. 
why I really wanted to study industrial design, what were my goals, what's my direction. By the end of reading it, they want to say like, eh, this guy or girl is going somewhere. That's what you want to instill with them. Number four, you want to make your portfolio look hella nice. This is graphic design, and of course that is design. But what it does is it does more than that. It shows the people viewing your portfolio that you have the designer's eye. The designer's eye. The designer's eye. And also it shows, you, shows them that you want to do your best. Put out your best work. And you can do that in how nice your portfolio looks. Now, as for style choices, there are so there's so many ways you could present your portfolio. But one easy and very attractive looking way that I highly recommend is do it in the style of a film treatment, believe it or not. My brother, you can check out his channel here, has made a video about how to do a treatment for a film that you want to present to people. It is actually a really, really nice style that he has, and I highly recommend doing your portfolio in the style. It is <laughs> Insanely easy to do in InDesign and it looks lovely. You can see his treatments here. And if you can take some ideas from that and make your portfolio look something like that, it'll look good and it's easy to pull off. Number five, submit your portfolio. And then enjoy the nerve wracking experience, which is the waiting game. This part is horrible, waiting to hear back if you get in or not. But just know that you have done your best and that I'm rooting for you, your parents are probably rooting for you, and you should be rooting for you, and maybe your goldfish, he's rooting for you too. And know that if you do your best, you've done all. And I think you'll get in. So getting into design school is not as actually, actually as hard as everyone makes it out to be. They understand that you are a beginner and they're not expecting super skilled work. I mean, if you can turn out super skilled work, great, but they're not expecting it. They know that you are a beginner. What they want to see is that you are creative and hardworking. And yeah, if you can show that in your portfolio, you stand a very, very, very good chance of getting in. Anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. So, if you are beginning your industrial design or any kind of design journey at university, I highly recommend that you subscribe to my channel. Basically, it is just me going through my struggles of my design journey. And we can be there for each other. My emotional support and all that fun loving stuff. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> please consider subscribing. Very much appreciated. And, as always, Jacob out and I'll see you in my next video. Adios people, stay, stay French, yeah.